Hello and welcome to our weekly share of the partial with the commentary of the Al Shekha Kodesh and often other of a portion as well. Uh, this is the last Parsha in the whole of the Torah, the Zois of Rocha. So the Al Shekha has got some extremely interesting things to say here, which I think is, um, as we keep repeating, particularly in the weeks that we've been looking at the Book of Devorim, that the themes of the Parsha completely interface and intersect with the themes of the, of the time of the year that we're in. And this is the Parsha, which we read actually at the end, because obviously at the end of the of the uh, Sikha's Torah, the end of the reading of the Torah. But it's, of course, it's it's the last Parsha in the Torah, and it's the Zaysa Brocha, so therefore it's, it's the one we're also bringing to Yom Kippur with. Let me just tell you that if you'd like to sponsor this year um, for to celebrate a Simcha, to celebrate a person that you know, to commemorate somebody who's passed or whatever, then please just be Rabbi YY, YY, Rabbi YY.com, YY, and Rabbi YY.com. We're more than happy to dedicate um, the Parsha Shear with the commentary of Al Shekha for the person you select. Uh, this week's uh, Shear is in the Skus for Rafur Shalema of somebody called Devora Bas Elisheva, someone I know, um, who is recovering from a very serious and large surgery. She should have a complete Rafur Shalema along with everybody who's not well and needs Rafur in. So let's move over to the Parsha. Um, and we will, of course, start with looking at the al -Shakh. And I've got all my, uh, oh, I've got to share the screen. Yes, share the screen, Rabbi Stein. Be kind. Let everybody else join in. Okay. So I hope that this of the three books that we're going to look at, this is the one. And indeed it is. Gosh, I'm getting good at this. And I move my little box here to the center which means I'm also looking at the camera, which can't do any harm at all. And expand my screen, take it down, and there we go. Good. So the altruism, what we're going to look at, the time that we have, um, there's so little time before Yom Kippur, of course. Uh, the time that we have, we're going to look at just one posik, the first one, Azaisa Baruch. And this is the blessing. Let's get my uh, little, hope you can see my little, Crosshairs as I'm firing a gun or something. This is the blessing that Moshe blessed, Ish Halakim, who is the, the man of God, Esbne Israel, the Jewish people, if name Moshe before he dies. The Al Shekh, he doesn't actually ask questions, too many here, just a couple, but his eyes are wide open to the difficulties of the, of the Pesukim. And maybe if you've been with me all these weeks, you've already got. You've already been able to achieve uh, yourself guessing what the questions the Al is going to ask. And if I give you a clue, just for fun, um, the first question is really based on the first letter. Vov. Vov. Vov means and. When I was in uh, primary school, as they call it, where I come from, or elementary school, if you're watching in the States, I think I was six or seven when they taught us that Vov, and, is a joining word. And is a joining word. And the question is, what, what's it joining to? Obviously, it should just stay by just start by saying, Zois Abrocha. This is the blessing which Moshe, the man of God, blessed the Jewish people before he dies. And this, and the joining word. But let me turn to the Asher and let him say it. Royal Osim Leib, it's appropriate that you should consider El Vov Shal Bezois, the Vov of the word Bezois. Achini Hoyer Mokoim Lachshav Lainer. And straight away, he gives you the answer. So normally the al as we know, um, those who have been joining me regularly, he uses this opportunity to set up many questions, sometimes 20, 40 questions, on one posit perhaps. Here, he asks one question and he launches straight in. So let's, so it makes it easier to remember, of course. So let's see what he has to say. It's very important. Royal Osim Leif, El Vov Shal the Vov in the word Vezois, Achini Hoyer Mokar Lach but surely there's a place for a person to think and maybe say, Kiloi, oh, I don't know why that happened. Oh, I see, you just do that. I hit my mouse inappropriately. Um, so a, you might turn around and say, a person might turn around and say, Kiloi Tarek Kedushas my Mori Hatayr Me Barashas for Ad Khan, Shem Amori Pivis Borach. The quality of the, of the Torah from Barashas to this moment, is totally different quality 
totally different status to the words contained in the Parsha of Zaysa Barucha. Why? So he says, because everything till now is the word of God. Everything was dictated to Moshe. Moshe is the scribe. Moshe writes it down. But the person who dictated it, that was God, God's word. But if now we're saying Zaysa Barucha Hashem Dibar Moshe, that Moshe is speaking, then that's different. This is Moshe's um, farewell address to the Jewish people, his farewell blessing to the Jewish people. This comes from him. So it's not the same quality. It doesn't have the same significance, the same holiness, the same eternity as the words that come from God. You might well think that, even if they don't. So he says, therefore, I can shame memory, please, up until now, it's the word of God. El is able when you come to these blessings, a yes, it Moshe that came from the mouth of Moshe. That's what the verse says. It says quite clearly, Berach Moshe. Moshe did the blessings. It comes from his mouth. This looks like every blessing that every tzaddik gives from his own heart. It comes from him, not from God. So there's a clear distinction, therefore, between the whole of the Torah, you may think, and this moment in the Torah, the last bit of the Torah, the last words of the Torah, that came solely and only from Moshe. Oh, that's very worthy, but it's not the same as words that come from God. He's not He's not the scribe writing down what's been dictated from God. He's now both scribe and author. And that's different. Okay. <laughs> this would be like any blessing that Tzadik gives. And the Atzma from himself, El his son, or any other blessing he would give. If people go and see great Tzadikim today and ask for blessing. Again, he tells Vo to not think that or to dis to dispense with people sus uh, suspecting that that's the case, it's going to evolve. It's a joining word. Indeed, I was right when I was, oh, my teachers were right. When I learned it right when I was six or seven in elementary or primary school. Evolve is a joining word. It joined us to the previous bit, just as the previous blessings, everything, all the words that came before in the Torah, and this as well. This is the same thing. It comes from God. Let's see. Ah, oh, but it said it comes from Moshe. It doesn't say Zaisa Brocha, as the Vov, Kalama, Bazais, Tisephus, El Akaidim, Badaimalam. This is an ad just adding on, it's just a continuation of what came before, and it's exactly the same as a Badaimalam. The Zema Mishlash of Tamil, and it is for three reasons that it's the same. One, Echot. You can see all my scribbles on my Alshot. Shahim Divri Moshe, Bilte Daimel, Yildi Isha Zilose, sorry, the Lady Isha Zilose. Because the words of Moshe, as Moshe, make it categorically different to the words of any other human being born of a woman, for a very simple reason. Because I say, Berach Moshe, because Moshe is the person who is completely different. So therefore, it's his words, but not that that means that it's not the same as comes before. We'll see why in a second. Two, because Ish Elokim, because he's the Ish Elokim, the the man of God. And when Moshe speaks these sorts of words, it's automatically inspired by God. It's a continuation, actually, of him being the scribe, writing down the words that came from God. This blessing that comes from him is ultimately, he's the conduit, and this blessing is actually coming from God. But it's given the identity of Moshe, given his stamp, if you like. So that's the second point. And that's what it says when we look back in the post. This Abzaisa Brocha is continuation. Asher Berach Moshe blesses, but he's the Ish Elohim. So the words are coming through him, Ish Elohim, directly from God. Uh, let's read that again, it's important. The Stam Devorev, his normal words, me Itayaz Barak, come from God, Behemam Rocha Kacha, Rocha Kacha, from divine inspiration. And in addition to that, the fact that he's, he's speaking to the B'nai Yisrael, es B'nai Yisrael, with the Jewish people, um, and that means that they are the children of the living God, so therefore naturally the words will be coming to them from Moshe, from God, because they are B'nai Elohim, B'nai Yisrael. And there's another factor that you have to fit into this. The Shlishi is who Lifne Maisi. And another factor is that these words are the words that he speaks before his death. And he says some interesting things here. Some of them he still says, just before he dies. 
Ki az shechina shura al hatzadik, because in normal circumstances, the hatzadik on their deathbed, when they speak, on their deathbed, then there's a particular holiness, a particular inspiration, divine inspiration, which imbues and infuses the words of a tzaddik on his or her deathbed. The famous story of Yitzka, of Yaakov blessing his children on his deathbed. We'll come back to that shortly. Um, and there is generally a belief that a person who is a fine, special person, the words that he or she says, the, just the moments before their neshama leaves their body and goes elsewhere and goes to heaven, that it's imbued with the specialness. And therefore, this is next to his death. Baruch Yisseri is given, is given, my wiggly line here, an extra Baruch, an extra degree. It's this, if what he speaks normally is imbued with holiness, is a dictation from God, certainly in the moments before he dies. As the Zohar says, and the Zohar says in the post does it ruchun yikovam, what does that mean? It's an addition, an additional holiness, a super holiness, a doubling, if you like, or tripling. Zenifnei Maisa, that's why I emphasize this Lifnei Maisa. Alkane, I have to move this up, here, there it is. The Alkane, where did I go? What's the place? Uh, yeah, Alkane. Godel Yisran Baruchos called Sanik. Therefore, there's an extra addition extra value to the blessings of the words Matzadik. In other words, at the moment of their death, it's not really their words. Because the, the Shekhinah, the presence of God, is there. It's the famous story when Yaakov, when he bows down in his bed, that story at the end of the, the, end of the book of Bereshish, the Parsha of Vayachi, it says Yaakov bows down to the, at the foot of the bed, from which you've got the idea of the Shekhinah, the presence of God, is actually physically or geographically located there. He's bound down to it. Sadik, end of life, special attachment to God. The words are imbued with that specialness. Called Sadik, but Ismael's my side, every Sadik, at the moment of his death, the Makar of Yama. Sorry, sorry, a Makar of Yama, when his days are coming to their end. While Cain, Masigim, as Yasim, Kol Chayyim, then they are on a higher level from any other words. Asher Shmuel Hakon, as Shmuel Hakon, um, famously, as Nava. Shmuel prophesied before he died. The more the same heavy. Famous story. So there you go. So the Alshuk is telling us, therefore, let's just review that before we move on a little bit. And the Alshuk is telling us that I think we can put it all together very easily. And it says, This is the blessing, not just from Moshe, the Vov, just like the rest of the Torah. It came from God. Why should that be the case? Because Moshe is the man who is uniquely connected to God in a way that no other human being in history has ever been. And he's blessing the Jewish people. Of course, the message is going to be, therefore, imbued with particular holiness. And, it's, and if that wasn't the case under normal circumstances, it's leafly Moshe before he dies. And before you die, that's when you get given a very, very particular closeness to God. You really do become the, the mouth of the Shem. Okay. That's that idea. Let's close that, and let's look at something else. Now, the word bracha in its own right. I'm taking you here to. This is actually a big thrill for me because we're going to be looking at the Alshech, the commentator, Rabbi Ruchim, um, the old Mashgiach of Mevod, um, Rabbi Ruchim Levovitz or Levovitz, uh, who was the great Mashgiach of Yeshiva in Mir. When I was there, I had the great schools of uh, of learning. Uh, with one of the grandchildren of Rabbi Rocham every week, uh, which is fabulous for me. And of course, we learned his safer, which is this one. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at Rabbi Dester. So as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's a great way to go into Yom Kippur. Um, he, I didn't put up here, but here in the Sefer Nefesh Achaim of Rabbi Chaim Volozhin, uh, and uh, Rabbi Chaim Volozhin famously explains what the word bracha means. It's going to be expanded on here, but I'll give I'll give you the headline, and then we can look uh, at it in the in the words of of Rabbi Rucham. But basically, bracha, which normally is translated as blessing, actually has got a different meaning. The word baruch, according to Rucham Belozhin, actually means to increase. If a, a bracha increases, and that sounds a little bit abstract, a little bit strange. Let's pursue this through the through the sefer called Das Chochma Musar of Rabbi Rucham Levovitz. That's what it looks like, incidentally, if you want to see it. And we have it here on our screen. 
And the, the name of this essay, it's, it's a beautiful essay, it's very, very long, so therefore we're not going to go into so much depth. Um, however, it's called Ish Asher Kibakose, each man, each woman, according to their blessing, and from that blessing that you get, that is your perfection, that is your hashlema, is to fulfill your potential, everything that you have. Ish Asher Kibakose, like your blessing, your increase, that is Heshlemase. That is your fulfillment. Hmm. Uh, to give you a very simple, just to make this easy before we go a little bit deep, when I sign copies of my books, um, I often uh, write the best blessing I think I can possibly bless anybody. And as it is, Eric Yom Kippur, let's give that blessing to you now so you can be ready with your amens. And that is what I write inside my books. Gosh, you're getting this for free. No book, even. Um, you should have a life of achievement. You should have a life of achievement. And that, well, the reason I think that's the best blessing you possibly could get is because ultimately, um, the, when, you, when you have a life of achievement, it means you've fulfilled everything you could do and become. If you've achieved your ambitions, your mission, if you've achieved, if you've helped the people you should have been able to help, if you become the person you could have become, if you've learned what you could have learned, et cetera, et cetera, your life's fulfilled. Full, full, it's full up. And that's going to be very important, this idea of being full up shortly um, when we look at uh, Rabbi Bessler in this. But it's full up. And therefore, that is, go back to the title, when you are blessed. And remember, the word brach means to increase. If you've increased yourself to fulfill yourself, to fill it up, fill you up, to become the person you could have become, to have fulfilled the mission that you could have fulfilled, then it's a full life. You've done what you should have done. Then you feel good about yourself. <laughs> you should feel good about yourself. You've completed the mission you were sent here to achieve and to do. If you don't have a life of achievement, it's a frustrating life. I could have been better. I could have done more. I should have done this. And you know you could have done it and you didn't, then you feel frustrated and you feel disappointed in yourself, and perhaps rightly so. Anyway, let's see what uh, Rabbi Rokhan has to say. Ish asher ki It's everyone according to the blessing. That is hashlemus, that's perfection, that's fulfillment. This is going back to previous Mantes Koches. This is the blessing of Yaakov Avinu to his children. And what does the Torah say? This is what their father blessed them. And he blessed them each He blessed them each one according to his blessing. Sounds strange. He blessed them according to the blessing? Should you just say he blessed them? Each one according to their blessing. So what does that mean? Each one according to the blessing. Rashi says, each one according to their blessing. The blessing that he gave them was the blessing that was it was going to be fulfilled in the future through each and every one of them. They would, through this blessing, grow to fit the clothes, fit the talus, fit the tefillin, to actually, not necessarily a keeper, I suppose, fit the kettle, to be worthy of it. They had a life of achievement. The Makamas of Heresy writes, let me read it. Rabbi Rahman. The Makama Sakiris, I've explained Beirana Inyan Habrocha Shabarak Akhbasashot. I've already explained this whole idea elsewhere, but he's going to revisit it now. Shabarak Shabirkus call Echod the Echod Hoyusa the Kafi Ha Royloi Lefitiva Vidoisa. The blessing that Yaakov gave each and every one of his children was a blessing that fitted their personalities and their possibilities perfectly. Personalities and their possibilities perfectly according to their character traits etc but this irene al zay mahash and sinasha cuz you come see such yet in yakov and you see that clearly remember the bit when yosef brings his two sons menashe the oldest in the prime in front of yakov yakov is blind at this point or whatever that means and he says give them a, a blessing father and he puts his hand out and puts his hand to give the bit the the the, the Bachor, the firstborn's blessing, the, the, if you like, the stronger of the blessings, to the secondborn, Ephraim, and his left hand, and, and, the, and his, a, on the, 
that the firstborn, Menashe, like this, Yosef sees this, assumes his father, a, because of his blindness, doesn't know what he's doing, and tries to take his hand off his, uh, his uh, youngest son's head, his right hand, Yaakov's right hand off his youngest son's head, the right way around. And Yaakov says, Yudati bini Yudati. I know what, my son, I know what I'm doing. But then he says famously, but this is his brocha. This is his brocha. The brocha I'm giving him, that's his brocha. Well, let's see what that means. When the Sarah Alzeya Mahosha Matina Shakhim was Yosef and Yosef wanted to eat in Yaakov the brocha of a koyer lemanasha, when he wanted to move his father's hand so that Yaakov would get the blessing of the firstborn to the firstborn, Manasha, Ashiva, he said, Yudati bini Yudati, I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm echov a cotton, but his younger brother, Yigdo Mamen, will be greater than him. That's possible, I'm going to But the Chura Matshuva, he's who El Shalasi. How is that an answer to what Yosef wants? Yosef wants you to give that blessing, the stronger blessing, to the oldest one. He means this is, is going to be, is, the younger one's going to be stronger, going to be greater. I want him to be greater, give the blessing of greatness to the greatest, to the oldest. He wanted that blessing of greatness to go to his oldest son. Give it to him. Underlined here. And the Mishum de Yaakov lo hoya be yod al shanas as they brought the cloud. But Yaakov knew that he had not the ability, he didn't have the ability, even at this moment, this incredible moment of holiness, even at that moment, Yaakov was unable, had no ability to change the blessing that each had. The blessing that each one was to be given was the one which we just said a few moments ago, perfectly matched the potential of each one, their, their capabilities. So the bracha from Nasha was the bracha from Nasha, and the bracha from Ephraim, that was the bracha for Ephraim. I can't change that, Yaakov's telling us. I don't change things. I can increase. A bracha increases potential, so he can fulfill his potential. But I don't create that potential. God does that, and only God does that. Each one of us is made with uniqueness. The Talmud famously says the same way as no two faces are the same, no two souls are the same, no two personalities are the same, no two, the chemistry that goes to make up every individual is specific and unique to them. I can't change that. But I give you a blessing that you should have a life of achievement, that you should achieve the fulfillment of what you have. So let's read that again. So Yaakov's saying, I'm not able to give them the blessing except the blessing that fits who and what they are because God made them that way. I can't change that. I can make it better. I can make it increase. But I can't change it. I can make it a more beautiful painting with, let's say, three colours. But that's the only three colours I've got in the palette. But the Emma's Harry Nikro Molly, the natural fight, this whole thing is quite clear. The Posik says, Ish Ashaki Bokose Barakosa. That was the Posik said. Each one, according to the blessing, he blessed them. The Posik we had at the beginning. And Kamashi calls it Rashi, and Rashi says, Brocha Sidilabo al Kol Echab Echab. The blessing that would come about through each, to each one of them in the future if they fulfill their potential. So, we have to understand. <coughs> Zebegeder pain a pachashem and Elisha. He says, You understand that with the famous story of Elisha. So Elisha was a prophet, and a woman came to tell her that uh, she desperately needed money because somebody was going to. Um, she, was, she desperately, I won't go into the whole story because it's complicated. Um, however, he said, What have you got in the house? And she said, In, uh, I can't remember the exact word, in La Hamosca, I think it is, um, uh, your maid servant, there's nothing except a, 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 a pachashemen. A little cruise, a little container, a bottle of oil. He said to her, "Go and get borrow from all your neighbors every bucket and every pot and every bottle that you could possibly get." And then he closes the door, gives a blessing, and then he said, "Now pour from the oil into those bottles." And the, it just kept this little bottle just kept pouring as though it was attached to a tube to some big oil refinery, and filled every single container until there was no, all the containers were full. And then the blessing stopped. He was able to sell the, the oil, make the money to solve our financial problems. But that's how a blessing works. You take what's there and you make it bigger. Yaakov made somebody's blessing bigger. His sons, his grandsons, 
but I can only make what's there better and bigger. I can give you a blessing to fulfill to the life of achieving. I can't change that, that's your choice. Let's look at the next. Let's close this one. Let's go to Rabbi this. Let me come straight to Yom Kippur, although he doesn't refer the reference from Yom Kippur directly. Um, he says here in this essay, Tfila and Brocha Mitoich HaKoras Echasayim. Tfila and blessing, so prayer and blessing comes from a recognition of what you need and what you lack. Hmm. Interesting. So Rabbi Bessel, this incidentally is in Kele Gimel of Mitzvah Mediyo. Has it got the page number here? No, it doesn't. So for those who might want to look at it at home, it's 170 pages. So it's not 173. 273. 273 and volume 3. Let's have a look at Rabbi Bessel. And then we'll tie all these three, uh, four actually, with her, uh, the Lodgen, these four giants of Jewish thought together uh, for our young keeper, just um, a day and a tiny bit uh, away from us. The forest of Verena, the Devorim Elo, yes, I want to explain, he says, a little bit further, so I've jumped into the middle, and you'll see we, it won't stymie this. Nusach, first top line, Nusach Abrochahi, the way that we express a blessing, what's the wording of a blessing? So the rabbis say, Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you, Hashem. O Perusha HaRashayim, and the various commentators, and he says, the Kadek Hemach, that's Rebbein Bach here, Shashem Hu Mekar HaBrochus, right, Baruch Atah Hashem, you give a blessing, blessed are you, right, that means you are the source of blessing. A beard, what does that mean? Everything that comes um, in the world comes from God. We are asking, again, it's a concept the Alsha mentions elsewhere. What's the wording? You make me holy by doing mitzvahs. It is, in other words, by doing a mitzvah, you're creating within me an expansion, a brocha, an increase. I am a different person after I've done a mitzvah to the one I was before. The blessing has increased me, has enhanced me, has expanded me. Same idea. So he says, therefore, that's why I share Kiddushan of a mitzvah. I've, you created more holiness in the world by your blessing, by increasing me. I have the potential to be holy. If I get this right, call the spouses the galim the briam, bomb the many is baruch. That ability to increase what we have comes from God. Ubrocha he rebo. So that's exactly what we saw when we looked at nefesh chaim, or we or we referenced it. Nefesh chaim says the word brocha means increase. And the spouses are ruchnius as zayis, and it increases ruchnius spirituality, makes us more holy. Umi mila and automatically mizraba ali dezeh. Gam Gashmias Kikidum the Ruchnias. And therefore, simultaneously there often comes about when Hashem increases or allows, it gives a, a blessing, allows us to increase by our choices, etc., gives us the blessing of us of that becoming greater. We obviously need often more physical, more material things that come along with it to accommodate it. For example, but if God uh, gives you uh, an, an increase of the physical, the container, without the content that goes in it, then in a brocha elokol alodam, and that would be a curse. Hmm. Think of somebody who's given a lot of money. When the money is the vehicle, but the blessing of you increasing yourself, perhaps depending who you are could be focused through. So you want to increase your potential and your potential, your, your fate, your fulfillment is going to be um, that you are going to be able to give lots of money to Tzedakah. So if you increase yourself to become the sort of person who is a, a chesed-oriented person, concerned for other people, wants to be creative in, in chesed and coming up with all sorts of ideas to help people in the best possible way, which of course is for them not to know they're being helped, then Hashem will give you the money to do it. Then, because you've increased yourself, you need, spiritually, you need a vehicle to contain that or to accompany it. That's like a pot, right? So there, the, the contents are there. 
and therefore no, we can, we can cook, as it were, together. But what if Hashem gives you a pot where there's nothing to go in it, and the pot is burned, and it smells, and it doesn't work? You only get the physical increase it to accommodate the spiritual increase which you have chosen for yourself. So therefore, if he gives you without it, without, if he gives you tons of money and you're not a spiritual person, instead of using it for philanthropic, or I'm talking about Jewish philanthropic um, ideas, then, and, and, and pro, uh, projects, then of course it becomes a call, it becomes a curse. So therefore, um, because if you don't, then you become, uh, you've been given all this money, you become totally naturally, and probably not lots of people who become utterly welded, wedged into the money thing, you're on the treadmill of money you never get off. And you're not using it for spiritual reasons, it's more money, it becomes like an addiction. You can't free yourself from it. Now, we say in this bracha, that's what we saw before, that Hashem is the source of all blessing. He causes things to increase. That's what Yaakov is saying. Baruch Hashem. He's giving you a blessing, sons, grandsons, that it, what you've got will increase. But therefore, automatically, if you've got more, then you've got to increase the spirituality to accommodate that. So all the kingdom, everything, money, whatever it is the person has, gifts, talents, Hashem will give you an increase in your intellect, an increase, an increase in your, your skills, your, your, your gifts, that comes from Hashem. But I'm an Evesh Chaim, and then he quotes her an Evesh Chaim. If you wanted to know where it is, in Shar Beis, in, in Prof. and Beis and Dalad, the Shekosa She'im, come on the side, Milas Boruch, is Shvach V'tchil Hashem. He says the word Boruch does not mean praise to God, he doesn't need our praise. Ela Tfilah B'Vach Hashem, but Sevz Riba Shmas Be'Adam. It's a request, Boruch, for him to increase more Ruch Mias in the world. Let's read on a little bit further. The king has word more. So let's read this, uh, go into this more depth. Let's wrap it up. In a kolma she yargish adam b'chesayim. Now this is takes us to Yom Kippur time. In just a few hours' time, you'll be standing in front of Hashem. This is the end of a ten-day process to maybe um, uh, fill in any gaps that we left in our tefillahs from Rosh Hashanah. And so we've had ten days to do this, but of course the the culmination of the whole process is clearly Yom Kippur. Let's see. So here, when it comes to, um, well, from top, again, if you feel yourself lacking, maybe you didn't, there are these gaps from Rosh Hashanah, human nature, if you feel you like something, you want to not like it anymore, you want to fill that gap. And therefore, you're praying to God so that that gap gets filled. Please give me the thing that I need. Because when a person feels himself lacking, forgetting a, a religion for a second, whenever you feel yourself you need something, you go to the source of that thing to get it. You need food, you go to the, the supermarket. You need clothes, you go to the clothing store. You're doing some some uh, hand, uh, some DIY repairs, and the saw you've got is too big or too small, and you go get a new saw. You go to the DIY store and get that. Whenever you feel you need something, if you're lacking something, you go to the source that the thing comes from. Some people make the mistake when they feel themselves lacking, lacking something. The most example says, "Esa osher lemakarakas." So a person says, I need money, therefore I have to go to the source of money. I'll go to Harvard or Yale Business School, I'll get a business degree, and then I'll know how to play the markets and stuff. That's the source of the money. No, it's not. It's not. As he says, that's where you'll go. Ah, But if you've got a proper perspective, a real perspective, you know, you do a Kimakara, Amiti, the call, the source of everything is Hashem. I remember I once went to my role, the Gitzit role, Rabbi Rachel, Zichazad, the Bracha. Um, I was going through one of my uh, financial crises, um, back in Medley, and so I was worried. I can't remember now, but my job had disappeared, or two jobs, probably three. And uh, we were in a bit of a financial crisis. 
And his, his parting words were, don't forget that Hashem is a very large bank. He's got no shortage of money. So if Hashem, if you that is your perspective, then you turn to Hashem for the money. But there's an important point. So such a such a Jew with such a perspective will turn to God. That's where you go for the money. That means Haragoshas, a chasorn, the hechrach, Tobin is a is a mom in Leodot to feel it. That is to say that when you feel yourself liking in any way, you turn to the source of the thing which in your mind, as a Jew who's a miming, is of course Hashem. You ask him for help. It's called to feel it. When you feel you lack, you ask for help. When a Jew feels he lacks, whatever it is, you turn to prayer. Because you're talking to the source of whatever it is, whether it's ideas, intelligence, health, wealth, and all the rest, children, grandchildren, so on and so forth. Um, the other way around. Um, the person doesn't feel himself to be lacking. Then Ad Kadeshi Ifas the Mob Alafana Salashem is Barakatfila, so that he feels he, he doesn't feel he needs to ask God. Adan Lord Khosh, because Sarah Lana meets him for the future. Obviously, by definition, if you don't turn to God, you don't feel that you're lucky. For God to give it to you, for God to give it to you, without recognition that you're lucky, will never let you know that maybe you are lucky, uh, feel its significance, and certainly not feel that he is the source. Of the thing that you needed to turn to. And so we can stop there on our destiny. I think the connection to Yom Kippur is really quite obvious. Uh, a bracha is a, an, an increase and an expansion of who and what you are. We've got 10 days from Rosh Hashanah, we've got a month before then. It's a time for, and this is important, some people get the whole Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur thing completely wrong. I've heard somebody, I think I mentioned this to you recently, who said that it comes to Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, this time of year, I just want to hide underneath the blankets, wait for it to be all over. She was a lady who was terrified of this time of year. It's a sinful mistake and a miscalculation. Hashem didn't set up Rosh Hashanah and Kippur to get us. He set it up to get us back. Not to get us, to get us back. It's a father who wants his child. A bracha is a chance to increase, but you only feel the need to increase, you feel there's something lacking in you. And that's when you turn to Hashem when it comes to tefillah. So the Alshach says this time of year is a bracha that comes directly from God through the mouth of Moshe, the Ish o Elohim. And it was so much to, near to his death when he asked that there should be a bracha over each and every single one of the Jewish people to all of the tribes. And we have to realize what our potential is. And if we don't know and who sees themselves subjectively anyway, then I hope we fall back on the theme I'm sure I've said at least 12 times so far in this series, where it says at the beginning of Pirkei Ovas, Asalacharav, nobody sees themselves clearly or objectively. Get hold of somebody who can see your potential that you can't see. You're too close to you to see you. Yosef was too close to his two sons to see which one deserved the more powerful broch. That it was Ephraim, the youngest son, who should get that blessing, and Manasseh should get the other blessing. Yosef was too close to his sons to see that. But the grandfather was a, a level behind, a level back, to be able to see with more objectivity how that worked. The, blo- the brocha that's inside each and every one of us is realized in Yom Kippur. That's the time when Hashem gives you a special brocha, as long as you are looking closely and all the working that we should, work we should have been putting in. It's not too late. We'll be reading those words in the Machser and Yom Kippur. It's uh, God's trying to get you, get you back, and get you in touch with yourself so He can give you a bracha to make you much better. Say, I would like to be a better person. I say that, incidentally. I'd like to be better. I'd like to be a bigger Yodi and the Rubenstein, doing more things for Him. And hopefully, with, therefore, He will allow me to do that and expand so that I too, just like you, this goes through this young keeper, will have a life of achievement. I wish you a good single time, a great year, and indeed a year where every single, um, every single blessing, every single potential that you have, every gift that you have, takes a gigantic leap forward and expands you and expands the great things that lie within every single one of us. 
or wonderful, healthy, wealthy, sorry, blessed here. 